So you're saying to yourself, you think you want to be Catholic, or at least you want to learn a little bit more about Catholicism. Where do you start? This whole video is intended to be a starter's guide for getting into Catholicism, whether it be you're ready right now to go, you know, find a church and become Catholic and get brought in, or if it's more of, you know, I don't want to make a commitment, but I want to know what are you guys all about? So let's go into this. There's going to be a little bit of a video here, probably around 10 or 20 minutes. And you might be asking yourself, why, why is there a 20 minute video on how to become Catholic? Shouldn't it just be go to a church, join and start going? Well, Catholicism is a way of life. It's a journey. It's something that involves and encompasses your entire life. So there's a lot of facets to it. Now that might sound complicated and that might sound scary. My intent isn't here to scare you away from it, but rather to help you learn what you're going to be getting into and how to best tackle this endeavor. So step one, this is mostly for people who are like, I'm, I'm ready to become Catholic. What do I do? First thing you're going to do, go into your search engine, whichever one you use, and find a local Catholic parish near you, a local Catholic church. They're going to have a process called RCIA, and you're going to want to talk to the RCIA director to join the church. This is going to be different from church to church. Some churches run them like on Wednesday, some do them on Saturday, some have multiple classes. Sometimes it's like a six month course, sometimes it's a more individual one on one whenever you're ready. Talk to all the different local churches you have and see which one works best for you. RCIA is the best process where you're going to learn what it means to be a Catholic and you're going to get all the tools you need to become Catholic. But it is a little bit of a commitment. Now, once you start the process, that doesn't mean you're going to become Catholic. It just means you're discerning it. You're not forced to become Catholic once you start. So show up to a few classes. Find out, is it for you? Is this what you really want? But I know there's a lot of people who don't want to commit to that process and they don't want to go through all these steps just to learn, well, what is Catholicism all about? So the next part of this guide is more for if you're on the camp of, I want to know what Catholics believe or don't you guys worship statues? Why would I want to become Catholic? If you're more on that side, this is more for you. And this can be a little bit more in depth. So step two, you don't want to commit to RCIA. You don't want to go to a weekly class. You just want to learn what do Catholics believe and how can I learn it? So there's a few different tools for this. The number one tool I'm always going to recommend is a book by Trent Horn. Trent Horn's name will come up a lot especially when I start talking about Catholic answers and apologetics and other things. Trent Horn is very, very big in this exact part of bringing people into Catholicism. So he wrote a book called Why We're Catholic, and it is a very good high level overview of what we believe and why we believe it. It's a very easy to consume book. I was listening to an audio book and I think I got through it in less than a week. So it's not too much information, but it's also not too little information. It gives you exactly what you need to fully understand what is Catholicism and what am I getting into. If you're a more studious, studious sort or you want to go more in-depth, I, I don't want a high-level overview. I want the overview. I want to know all of Catholicism. Then you're going to look for something called the Catechism. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is a fairly large and a little bit dry book that gives you everything why we believe, what we believe, and why we believe that. You can find it through an audiobook, but I also recommend there's a new podcast by Father Mike Schmitz, another name that you'll hear a lot, who does Catechism in a Year, where he breaks down this huge, dry, imposing book and gives you bite-sized segments every day to help you kind of learn it and understand it and put it into a good context. So if you're not in a hurry, or you don't want to sit down and read a book, again, it's, it's a very very dry book to read. When I read through the Baltimore Catechism, it was literally question 141. Why do Catholics believe X? Answer. Question 142. Why do Catholics believe Y? And so on and so forth. So if that's not your thing, Catechism in a Year is great. Another great resource, I actually just found this one, is the Handbook for Today's Catholic. It takes the catechism and breaks it down to about a hundred pages instead of a thousand pages. So it's still a lot of information, but it breaks down the core things that you may need to know. Another good one is a biblical walkthrough, the mass understanding what we say and do in the liturgy. Uh, that is by a doctor uh, I'm blinking on their name currently. Uh, but that is a wonderful walkthrough. I know a lot of people are intimidated by the mass and like why? 
why do Catholics do the Mass the way they do it? Well, this book will walk you through why we do the Mass in a very certain way, why it's important, and why it needs to be done that very certain way. If you've done other churches or gone other places, you know a lot of churches are very freeform. They kind of do whatever the, the leader of that church wants to do. The Catholic Church is not like that. Every Catholic Church is doing the same thing on the same day, whether it be you go to your local parish or fly halfway across the world and go to a parish in another country, or even at the Vatican, you're going to get the same information. That's part of what I love about Catholicism is that uniformity. Another resource you're going to want as you're kind of learning about what we believe and why we believe as you're reading through the Catechism or reading through Trent Horn, you're going to have a few one-off questions. You're going to say, okay, you've touched on this topic, but why, why do Catholics pray to statues? Why do Catholics worship the saints? Why do Catholics think that saints are gods? Those are all misconceptions, but the point is we've all heard those and you're going to have those questions at some point. Again, I'm going to point you to a place called Catholic Answers. Just put it in your search engine, whichever one you use, Catholic Answers should pop up. And in the description of this video, I will also include links to everything I'm talking about here so you can quickly access it. Catholic Answers has a big group of apologists who are people who have studied and trained on how to answer questions and give you the correct information about the faith. And so you can put in any one of those questions and you're going to get a wonderful, well thought out explanation that's going to have Bible verses and different links for you to be able to get the full information. One of the things I enjoy most about Catholicism and hopefully something that's drawn you to Catholicism is you'll see a lot of Catholics are very knowledgeable on the faith. They like to quote the Bible. They like to show you their sources. They like to talk about the church tradition. You'll often hear people talk about the early church or the early church fathers or the desert fathers. And that's because there's this huge, what we call the deposit of faith. There's this wealth of knowledge that we like to draw upon. It, it's not, we do this because this is how we like to do it, or we do this because that's what we think is best. It's, we do this because, and then here's all the reasons why. That's what I really enjoy about Catholicism, and hopefully that draws you into it as well. The other big, like, basic topic that you're going to want to research on and kind of learn is the Eucharist. Catholics, when you talk about going to Mass and things like that, are going to tell you, please don't take the Eucharist. You're not allowed to take it unless you're Catholic. And that's kind of strange to some people. Like, well, my local church lets me go in there and take it, or... You know, these other churches will do it. That's because we have a lot of belief around the Eucharist and keeping it sacred and holy. So I'm not going to get into that now. You can literally find videos that are hours and hours talking about the Eucharist. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description to a good answer on why we believe that and why it's so important to us. That will get you the basics, the very basic information. But there's more resources out there. Like I said, there is a lot of information when it comes to Catholicism. So Let's talk about some additional resources. The first one I'm going to mention, again, Father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a Year, a wonderful podcast that will take you through the Bible and break it down over the course of a year so you really understand what the Bible means when they're bringing up these certain things. I made a video about this before, and maybe I'll link that somewhere over here, maybe about why it's not always the best advice to just tell someone new, like, well, just go read the Bible. You know, there, there's a lot of context, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of history, there's a lot that goes into the Bible. So if you're just like, well, I want to become Catholic, go read the Bible, that's not necessarily helpful. So having someone guide you through the Bible that's going to give you a well thought out reasoning behind each passage and the context behind it is going to really draw you into the Bible in a way that's never been done before. You're also going to probably want to know about the rosary because that's one of those things like, oh, those Catholics, they have those weird beads and rosaries. Why are they worshiping the beads? You've probably heard about it. Again, there will be links in the description to learn how to do the rosary and why we do the rosary. Just know that it is not required. A lot of people have this misconception of like, well, I want to be Catholic, but I don't want to do the rosary every single day or I don't want to do that prayer or I don't want to. You don't have to. The rosary is not a requirement, but we do believe that it is a wonderful thing to do, and we do believe that it has a lot of benefits to doing it. So if you're discerning Catholicism, I suggest you take a look at the links and just learn how to do it and try it once or twice and see what is this really about? What does this really do for me? If it's something that you don't find fruitful or you don't like, don't do it. But a lot of people find themselves, after doing it once or twice, they really like the time that they set aside to pray, they like the fruits of it, they like kind of learning about the, the history of the rosary and the 
the meditations they do on it. So if Catholicism is something that you're discerning, which if you're watching this video, I hope it is, give it a try. It, it doesn't hurt to learn about it and try it out and see if it's something that you enjoy or like. There's also a Catholicism DVD set uh, that's wonderful with Bishop Robert Barron. Uh, again, I'll link that to you. That is a wonderful walk through Catholicism as a whole. It is wonderfully produced and full of art and wonderful stories. Another tool is called Formed. Formed you will get when you go into one of your local parishes in their bulletins or if you talk to someone, they should have access for the parish to this thing called Formed. Formed is like Netflix, but for Catholics. It's full of different uh, TV shows produced for Catholics. It's full of movies about saints. And it has a lot of good information for if you have questions, a lot of those Catholic answers kind of questions, you can find them on Formed as well. It also helps when you want, uh, you know, we want something in the background or background noise. Instead of having on a cartoon or something, it's good to have there just kind of learning it, hearing it, and immersing yourself in it. If you're discerning Catholicism, then it's always helpful to immerse yourself fully into it. Uh, the last extra tool I'll mention is Ascension Press. They are the group who helps to produce the podcast by Father Mike Schmitz, Mike Schmitz, excuse me, that I mentioned earlier. They have a lot of wonderful things for sale. They have a lot of podcasts, a lot of books. They are very involved. Uh, Ascension Press, I dare say, is just as popular as Catholic Answers. So get used to going to their website, check them out. There's a lot of free, wonderful resources there. I'll also give you a few recommended readings. These aren't necessarily books that you have to read to become Catholic or anything like that, uh, but that I found helpful through my own personal journey. Uh, there's Left to Tell, Discovering God Amidst the Rwanda Holocaust by Immaculate. Uh, that's a wonderful one for kind of that question that everyone has of how can you believe in God when there's evil in the world? This book does a wonderful job of addressing that. Uh, Dante's Inferno, of course, is a classic. Uh, some people refer to it as Catholic fan fiction. Uh, definitely don't go into it believing that that is an accurate 100 portrayal of everything, but it is still a wonderful look at sin, redemption, and how our choices can impact us. There's Seven Story Mountain by Thomas Merton, which is a wonderful testimony of finding God and coming closer to God. C.S. Lewis is a name you'll hear a lot. C.S. Lewis does uh, two books that I highly recommend. One is Mere Christianity. Now, Mere Christianity is not a Catholic book. Rather, it's a defense of why Christianity in general. However, I find it very compelling. So even if it's not necessarily I want to become Catholic, but why Christian or why Christianity, that book is wonderful for that. He also did a book called The Screwtape Letters, which is one of my personal favorites. It's written from the perspective of a demon, teaching another demon how to influence the world subtly. It gives you a really fun, interesting perspective into the supernatural. And you'll hear this term a lot, spiritual warfare, this, this ongoing battle that we can't see of the supernatural. I'm not going to go too deep into that because, again, this is supposed to be a broad overview of how to start. And if we start getting into spiritual warfare and demons and all that, that's... That's something I'd rather save for a different video and a different time. This is meant to just bring you into the faith, a chance to start. Something that I should have brought up way at the beginning, and I apologize, I missed this on my notes, is you know when you're finding that local parish, different churches do operate slightly different. They might have different traditions or small differences. So don't just go to one church and say, okay, this is it, this is my church, I'm done. Try a few of them out, see which ones you like. Ask around on your local subreddits or your local Catholic groups to get a feel for what does each church do a little bit differently. Definitely get to know the RCIA director. They're going to be the one, again, who brings you into the church, who's going to be your wealth of knowledge for all these sort of things. And the church is something that they will push on. The reason why we do RCIA in person is the church is, yes, it's a physical building, but it's also the people the people of the church and building those connections with the people is going to be really important for your journey, especially if you're discerning towards Catholicism and want to move forward with it. It's definitely easier if you have other people to help you through it. Definitely find a church that you're comfortable with and go to the mass, start participating. Now you can't take the Eucharist. We already mentioned that, but going to the mass and experiencing it is a great way to help you discern if this is something that you want to do. If you're nervous about it, you can watch online and see how the mass works without, you know, being there in person. And there's always booklets in front of you that if you open up, 
It will tell you exactly you know, what readings we're doing today, what the replies are, what you say, when, all that information is there for you. And of course, you can look to your neighbors when they stand up, stand up with them, when they kneel, kneel. Or if you don't feel comfortable with that, if you just sit there respectfully, that is completely okay as well. No one's gonna sit there and like, oh, you see, see that person over there, they didn't stand up. They're not a real Catholic, they don't belong here. That doesn't happen, so don't worry about that. There's other things like veiling and uh, other traditions. Again, you don't need to worry about all that to start. That's wonderful to learn about and wonderful if that's something you want to do. But as just starting about learning Catholicism and discerning, is this for me? This should be a good place for you to start without all those extra things. However, you will want to learn those eventually. So one final time, I'll mention all the books, all the links, everything I'm going to put in the description. So. If you want to find Catholic Answers, if you want to find the Catechism of the Year, I will put that all down there for you. If you have any questions after watching this about Catholicism, discerning Catholicism, go ahead and put them down in the comments. I will try and answer them as much as I can. I appreciate everyone's time in watching this. Of course, all the social media stuff, you know, like, subscribe, that all helps me out very much as well. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.